so I'm off to France to see Blizzard, uh, Blizzard Europe, I guess. Um, and uh, I don't speak great French. Uh, je suis parlé en petit French. Um, but um, I was speaking to Lewis, and Lewis said that they're going to pay and send for a translator. So hopefully, hopefully they turn up. Um, and hopefully they're like, really good. So I'm quite excited, you know, see Blizzard, get, get someone who can help speak French for me. It's gonna be, gonna be great fun. So I'll keep you updated on the journey. It's, it's like um, 20 minutes past six in the morning now, um, which is a little bit earlier than I like to get up. But I'm, I'm waiting for a train to go to London, to get on another train, to then get on a plane, to then be in France to get on a like, taxi. So we'll see how we go. Oh, I'm on a plane. Hey, look, see Paris over there. What's that? See Eiffel Tower. Where does that exist? Only in Paris. I didn't lie. I'm here now in France, which is very posh. Actually, we're in like a, a hotel right next to the like Chateau of Versailles or wherever we are. Um, unfortunately, my translator still hasn't turned up, so I just phoned Lewis. He said that they're on their way. Um, I don't know who it is. He did say it was a he, so I'm hoping it's like Morgan Freeman or something really cool. You know, be like, Judith Jouffre French or something really cool, you know, and his cool, like Morgan Freeman voice. So, fingers crossed. Uh, just gonna go have some lunch now and we'll see how it goes. Cool. So, it's, um, it's day two and. Um, Lewis said, my, my translator, my translator has finally shown up and uh, here he is. Bon, bon, bonjour. What are you doing? Bonjour. What? You're my translator. What bonjour. Could you, could you say in French, um, hello, we're happy to meet you. Hello, we are happy to meet you. There we go, brilliant. So no worries at all. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. She just looks like shell shot. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Ian. How you doing? Hi. You good. having a good time over in France? Yeah, so far so good. So so far so good. That's cool. Um, what Are was the train on? I'm having an okay time in France. <laughs> it's been pretty good. We've been yeah. playing uh, the build upstairs, um, fooling around uh, with with orcs and uh, yeah, didn't dwarves. Yeah, dwarves. dwarves. Dwarves, female dwarves. Right, like female dwarves. They were some beautiful ladies. Very beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and um, I think really, Warlords seems like 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 a big reset button in terms of as a as a kind of player, as a new player coming to the franchise. It seems like it is the time to join, um, just with the, mm -hmm. the fresh level nineties mm -hmm. and, and all the things that go along with that. Um, are you guys? expecting or are you kind of trying to plan for brand new players you know coming into the game you know for, for this how, how are you going to handle that i guess with with the level 90s sure i mean obviously i think we're, we're looking for warlords to appeal to all types of players whether it's existing players people who you know maybe have some nostalgia who played back in burning crusade who haven't played in a while or brand new people picking up world of warcraft for the first time um so yes i think the boost in is a really big part of that because it means that if you see advertisements for World of Draenor, you see a commercial, you hear word of mouth about it, you can jump in and actually experience that story in that, instead of having to go through a whole bunch of hurdles and leveling before yeah. you get there. And so, so BlizzCon, you were saying there was going to be some sort of experience, some sort of kind of yeah. like the Death Knight experience. Is that still on the table? Yes, well, so I think um, everyone is going to go through a starting experience in Draenor that really kind of sets the stage for the events that are unfolding. Um, it's something that's going to happen before what you may have seen today in Shadowland and Crossfire. That's going to be your second stop in Draenor. The first place you're going to go is on what's essentially a suicide mission through the Dark Portal to shut down what is an impending Iron Horde invasion that's going to you know, ruin our world. So that'll so, sort of set the scene for the whole exactly. parallel reality sort of thing that is where we are now. Uh, basically. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you're, you're, you're going through to stop an imminent invasion Spoilers, you, so you mostly succeed in at least buying time. Mostly. You mostly. don't... Ubers you, you, right. is not safe. <laughs> you, haven't, you, haven't defeated the, you haven't defeated the Iron Horde, but you've stopped you know, the imminent threat, but now you need to muster your forces, build your garrison, etc., yeah. to actually stop them for good. 
Um, now, when boosted characters go through that experience, they're going to have a slightly different version where we're going to pare down their action bars, kind of like we did with the Death Knight starter experience, where let's say you're a boosted mage at level 90. You might only have initially Fireball, Polymorph, and Frost Elder or something in your bar. But yeah, as you level easy. and progress a little bit, yeah. we'll unlock a few more buttons. Then a few more, then a few more. That makes because, sense, because yeah. like high-level characters, if you've never played the game before, you have a million yeah. spells. Exactly. You the last, the the last thing we want to do yeah. is give you, uh, you know, two action bars full of 25 buttons, yeah. and you don't know... Which order do I press the buttons? Yeah, yeah I mean, just, just all of them. Just yeah. mash your keyboard. I can, yeah, I, yeah. I can yeah. appreciate the, the boost, and I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I think everybody wants to play World of Warcraft with their friends, for sure. Yes. You know, it's not really... But in saying that... I, I mean, I've been playing WoW since it came out, and mm -hmm. my gaming habits have changed with WoW over the past 10 Ab years absolutely. or whatever. Absolutely. When WoW first came out, I had a ton of spare time, and I played it all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I've sunk more time into WoW than I have any other game, bar none sort of thing. Um, but what I find myself now is anytime I come back to play World of Warcraft, I level, because I like it. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. You know, you just... The, go to point A and then hand it in here and so you know, it's pubs and kind of, it's, yeah, it's, it's formula, easy gaming yeah. but it's mm -hmm. comfortable and sure. it's familiar and I'm always in a guild with my friends and I'm talking to them while I'm doing these quests that I've done like a million times or whatever and like the boost to 90 is great and I'll, I'll probably definitely use it but there'll always be a part of me that'll want to go back and like go through like I still mm -hmm. haven't done all of the cataclysm content yeah. because there was so much Absolutely. of it and you level from 1 to 60 so quickly now but it's such a it's such a strange experience because you get to sixty and you've had all this different content, but then Outland is how it always has been, <laughs> and then Northrend is yep. sort of always ha has been, and you you sort of get through them a, a bit quicker than you used to. But do you guys have like any like future plans to like revisit some of those places and make that sort of one to one hundred experience a, a thing again? Or? I mean, so I mean, le leveling is and remains a really important part of World of Warcraft. And that's, you know, you get one boost to 90, not an, an infinite number. So even the yeah. player that's getting their 90 for Warlords, I think the second they go back and want to make an alt or check out a different class, yeah. they're also going to be able to go back and level through the content they may have skipped. Um, we're definitely aware that, you know, the, definitely the, the, the timeline gets a little bit inconsistent there where you're dealing with, you know, the Cataclysm timeline and you go back to yeah, when Illidan yeah, yeah. is still ruling over Black Temple and so forth. Um, we obviously, in Cataclysm, put a lot of effort into updating a large portion of that level up experience. At, at this point, I think it's on that list of things that we'd like to revisit someday. Yeah. But the same resources that would go into, you know, updating Bur the Burning Crusade or Wrath mm. of the Lich King content exactly. are the, so those are the same people that would be making the brand new quests and the brand new outdoor content that's going to push the max level game forward. Yeah. And so I think we'd rather kind of keep focused on pushing forward at this point. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I think the boost is a really smart way of just focusing all the resources. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Garrison, you kind of went through kind of briefly as well today. Yeah. Um, we've seen through the kind of art blogs to start to see actually what that's going to look like yes. with the, the different sort of tiers. Um, the the whole side of it, 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 it uh, to me, it kind of seems like it's this expansion's profession almost. Like it's kind of it gives you the, another way to augment your character and give it a few extra mm -hmm. kind of passive bonuses. Um, you, you touched upon the fact that if, for example, I wasn't a blacksmith and I got a blacksmith follower or I mm -hmm. put a, a forge in yes. my uh, that I'd be able to use certain blacksmithing type um, uh, recipes. Mm -hmm. um, would those likely be things like belt buckles and those things that the rest of us quite enjoy having access to, or would it be specifically not so as not to affect the economy? I, I, I honestly, that's still something that we're working out at this point. Um, that's so, so it's kind of in flux. Yeah. I, I don't want to give you an answer no, that ends enough. up changing. I think. The design principles that are guiding us there are more or less exactly those that you just touched on, where we want to let you have access to portions of other professions, you know, tool sets, without really stepping on them completely, without making the person who is a blacksmith feel like, oh, well, no one needs me anymore because mm. everyone just has their NPC <laughs> yeah. that makes all their belt buckles or yeah. all their other yeah. things. And he doesn't give me, you know, any tool back. No, exactly. When no, I'm exactly. Apparently, I didn't tip him enough. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, but, but so I think that's kind of the balance we're going right. to strike. Okay. After BlizzCon, um, coming back to our, our, our talk about garrisons, mm -hmm. Uh, there were a lot of people mentioning on in, on places like in the community and Reddit and stuff like that saying that um, 
it would be pretty cool if you had your alts walking around your garrison. Yes, and yes. I mean, it, it seems like a simple enough idea. I'm sure it's probably technically it's quite tec difficult it's to do. It's technically complicated. It's a yeah. really cool idea. It's something that's all, it's like on our wish list of things that okay, we want so to it's, do. It's made we like the idea. We, we, we all like, we, every, all of us, they had come up like, like internally among a couple of people and you know, yeah. we, every time we hear it from fans, we're like, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, there is going to be some you know, some, some elements of the garrison are going to reflect just the capabilities and things that your character has gotten. For example, the stables building. The mounts in the stables will be your own personal mounts based on the favorite ones that you tend to use the most. You'll see them. Just yeah, kind of, so, know, so like the bridging. garrison is planned to be somewhat populated and not like oh, yes. this sort of ghost town that you turn oh, no, up no, no, to no. where it, it's nothing is de happening. It's definitely not that. Yeah. Okay. One, one of the coolest things that the garrison is introducing is also behind the scenes, and hopefully this will be somewhat transparent, is a slightly different NPC AI system that we're working on that will allow um, NPCs to behave somewhat more organically. So imagine, you know, you have a, not mailboxes. Well, a bit like of that, but you have a blacksmith follower who you know wakes up and wants to go to work, so he goes to work at his forge, and then as he does that, he gets increasingly thirsty, so he takes a break and goes okay. to the tavern, oh, and that sort of thing. But eventually, he gets tired and goes back to you know the barracks or his room to sleep. Um, We've had to actually come up with this. This is one of the challenges because players can choose where to place their buildings in the garrison. Oh, yeah. So we can't so pre-script and pre-place yeah. all of the. So they have to figure out how they're going right. to get places. The tavern yeah, could yeah. be in any one of ten oh, different places. Cool. So and so we've really had to come up with a system that we think will also be able to use going forward in some of our cities and other places that yeah. will bring them to life. Is there is there any um, benefit to placing certain um, uh, buildings in different plots? Like for example, if I had a, a coal mine, mm -hmm. um, you know, would that be best situated in a certain place or you know does, does that affect it or is it literally just where I think that looks nice uh, most of the latter I, mean, I think the, the main choice is what buildings you want to place because there are more building types than there are plots mm -hmm. and then once you've gotten past that stage it's just what layout you personally and prefer it's character by character not yes. count wide okay so character by character though we are mindful of the danger of what we ran into on the player farm in mists to some extent where people feel like the, people feel the need to have alts just to feed a main. Mm. Um, so we want to make sure that we avoid the temptation to feel like you need to have multiple garrisons just to funnel resources to your main. If you want to have alt garrisons that exist for the sake of your alt progression, great. But the second that you're doing it just for the sake of your one main character, we want to avoid that. So we're going to build the system accordingly. So, and for a garrison, I mean, currently, you know, the average player will park themselves in whatever city they need to to get mm -hmm. close to everything in the expansion or whatever yes. is there going to be incentives like in garrisons to sort of keep you there because it's your stuff or is it enough that it's just your stuff that you think people are just going to probably stay there I mean, we don't necessarily we want players to visit the garrison and check in there pretty much you know once per play session maybe yeah. maybe you kind of when, when you log in and when you log out kind of thing we're not designing it as a place where you're just going to idle and be able to conduct all of your business mm. there's no auction house there there's no, no yeah. bank because that's one of the things that's always been a concern of player housing in that it has the risk of pulling people out of the world. Yeah. Everyone goes into their own little personal spaces and before you know it, the public areas are relatively deserted and yeah. you lose some of that MMO feel. Yeah. So, I mean, and on that topic, I guess, have you guys just sort of like now given up on trying to like put people into certain places? Because there's, I mean, there's so many big cities that are just completely dead now. You, you go into yeah. them and there's nobody there. Like, have you guys just sort of accepted that people just want to be sort of close to the new content Some people going mean, to be there. And yeah, people, yes, people want when We expect people to spend most of their time in Draenor. People are, are going to want to be close yeah. to the new content, certainly. And then when it comes to, you know, back in the old world, some of the individual cities, some people will set their hearth or port to those yeah. places just mm -hmm. because they're deserted and yeah. relatively quiet. Yeah, but yes, we, we understand. I mean, I think we pretty much do build around the expectation that Orgrimmar and Stormwind are going to be the most populous cities. Yeah. But, you know, the same way in Mists, most people spent a lot of their time in the two Vale Shrines. Yeah. They're going to be similar outposts in Draenor. And is there, are there any plans to ever have something similar to Dalaran ever again, or was that just too much? Because they're... Potent potentially, um, it, it's. I think one of the main arguments against a sanctuary type city like that is our game still ultimately is about alliance versus horde. Even on a PVE server, you have yeah. those undercurrents. Yeah. 
Um, there's something a little bit kind of desensitizing about seeing the opposite faction all over the place. Yeah, you know? not being able to yeah. just like open yeah, up on yeah. some sort of that's, thing. That's, yeah. that's Dave. He always goes to the bank. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fine. I go to a different bank. But <laughs> still, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're still brothers. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So Ian, you lead the the okay, cool. You lead the encounter team. Um, yes. And um, so you you build the bosses and the encounters and the raids, yes. all the best bits really. Um, the two launch raids, um, the um, Black Rock um, Foundry, Foundry um, that one has 10 bosses yes. in there. Um, are we going to see more kind of bonus bosses like you did previously with, you know, kind of Raden and uh, Sinestra and stuff? Um, there isn't a plan for a bonus boss that's, you know, mythic only in mm -hmm. 6.0. Though there are going to be some mythic only elements of these fights, mm. you know, like bonus phases, that sort of thing yeah. here and there. Um, that's something that we, we kind of reserve to an extent. We do it selectively when we feel it makes sense given the scope of a given tier, given some story element. I was, I was told um, a while ago by a, a little crap that you actually personally designed like Raden and Sinestro. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is that, do you save those for yourself? Like, are they there? Like, no. Is it like, guys, I've got to make one that people are going to find it really hard. I'm um, going to do this. Like, feed off the tears of, of hardcore raiders. Honestly, so Sinestra, I mean, I, I wasn't the lead encounter designer at the time. Mm. That was just a boss I was interested in working mm. on and, and had some interesting ideas for. Um, Raden, actually, I mean, this was, I think, I have a lot of regrets about that boss. Oh, really? It really didn't work out the way I intended it to. It was. That was sort of me shoehorning the boss into the tier because I thought it'd be really cool to have that bonus boss, and I was like, "Well, I'll just do it myself." Normally, I actually don't have as much time to implement bosses anymore since most of the time is spent in sort of overall creative direction and oversight of the content as a whole. Um, and I, honestly, I think that showed in the case of Rodet. It was a reminder of why I often don't have the time I to implement bosses. I think it's tricky because obviously you didn't test them as well. Well, that, that, the that's thing, that, that was the biggest problem. It was that we didn't want to have the heroic only boss on our PTR mm -hmm. uh, because that kind of threw in the surprise. Part of it was supposed to be a surprise. And while I obviously put the time into building the boss, um, we do a lot of internal testing, which is essential. And you know we have our internal raid team that will spend entire days just iterating on the boss, repping on it, practicing it while designers watch. And personally, I didn't have, I wasn't able to devote as much time as I would have liked into watching those testing sessions. I watched them here and there. I got feedback from the testers afterwards, but I can't help but think that if I'd actually been able to really observe more of them, I would have realized some of the major loopholes in the fight. But do you still want to do those special yeah, I, it, it's, I like I said, it's, it's, there's, no, there's no formula to it, right? Yeah. I think I, I would almost guarantee that we're going to do another one at some point. It's just not going to be in 6 Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool. I think that'd be fun. Brilliant. Yeah. I think that's the thing is that raiding has always been the, the, the core of Warcraft in terms of the, the, the hardcore, you know, chase that and they love mm -hmm. it. And there's obviously Blizzard's move towards a more accessible raiding yeah. format, uh, which is great, but it does obviously alienate those early hardcore raiders who feel like, this used to be our store thing that only we did. Yeah. Um, and I kind of like those little one-off bosses yeah. um, that kind of give them, it's like, okay, well, there you go. If you think you're still the best, try and try and take that down. Yeah. yeah. I think that's always fun, so I think that's really appreciated. You still have a chance to call it Mystic Raiding. Oh, yeah, Mystic, yeah. Mystic that's what we rating. call it, Mystic Raiding. Yeah, it's yeah. Mystic Raiding. Mystic Raiding. It's going to be Mystic. <laughs> We're going to see if we can get that kind of yeah. yeah, good luck. Yeah. I like that, yeah, at the end of BlizzCon, it was everyone was still saying Mystic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Good, yeah. Okay, cool. So, do you think we'd be surprised at, like, the percentage that you're expecting of people to actually do Mythic rating? Like, I think it's, gonna be, it's going to be very similar to people who are rating today. I suppose, I mean, functionally, yeah. they're, it's the same type of content, the same audience. Um, so, yeah. Cool. So, well, thank you very much. Sure thing. Cool. If you'd like to hear more really awkward interviews between myself, Sips, and a member of the Blizzard team, then make sure you like this video. Uh, we've done one with the Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls guys. Um, it's even more awkward than this one. So make sure you like that and we'll put it out ASAP. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.